Hi, in this particular video, we're looking at proportionality questions, which is direct proportion and indirect proportion. It's roughly about grade five on GCSE maths. Please do, as always, stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and compare your solutions. If you do need any help, always add a comment and I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this particular video, we're going to look at proportionality questions. And I've got two questions which are direct proportion and one question which is um, inverse proportion. Please do stop the video, have a go at the question, compare your solutions. If you follow the link below in the description, you'll be able to go through to the uh, site and download this particular question. OK, or this particular worksheet. So two variables are connected by that relationship when x equals that that right formula for y in terms of x so we're going to look at that one first and if i put this over to one side i'm going to write it as y is proportional to x okay because that's our direct proportion relationship however we need to then convert that into a formula which is y equals kx and really what we've got to do is find this value of k well we're told that when x equals 0.2 y equals 1.8 so we can write that as 1.8 equals k times 0.2 and then really it's just a case of finding the value of k by dividing both sides by 0.2 so we're going to get k equals 9. So therefore we can now write the formula in answers to the first question as y equals 9x and that would be the answer to part a of this particular paper. Okay, now we're going to use this formula for uh, to answer question B and question C. So question B, it says work out Y when X equals 0.16. So all we do is we say, OK, that's fine. We know that Y equals 9X. OK, well, Y is going to equal 9 times 0.16. OK, pop that into a calculator or work it out. You're going to get 1.44. So therefore, Y equals 1.44. That's the answer to the part B. OK, part C, we've got a very similar thing, but a little bit of manipulation because it's a little bit of algebra here. We're going to use the same formula, C, Y equals 9X. But in this case, we're told that Y is 29. So 29 equals 9X. If I divide through by 9, I'm going to get 29 over 9 equals X. OK, and that actually is the answer to the question. It's perfectly fine to leave it at that. However, if you prefer to write it as a decimal, you could put that into a calculator or you could calculate it out that X equals 3.2 recurring. And that's the answer to part C. OK, I would say very typically these are calculator type questions. OK, let's move on then to uh, question number two. It says the cost of petrol for a journey is directly proportional to the distance travelled. So again, I'm going to write that down as a full, as a proportional relationship, which is cost is directly proportional to distance. But then I'm going to convert it into a formula. So I'm going to say that cost equals K times distance. Remember, very similar to the way we did this in the first question, right at the very top there, Y equals KX. I'm going to write cost equals K times distance. OK, so from there, because of the information I've got, which is Joe travels 130 miles and spends 15 pounds on petrol, I can use that information to work out the value of K. So I can say it's 15 pounds in fuel multiplied by K times uh, 130 miles. OK, so if I divide both sides through by 130, I get K equals 3 over 26. And that's kind of good enough. Again, if you wanted to, you could convert it into a, a decimal, but sometimes decimals can be a bit more trouble than they're worth. Um, so 3 over 26 is fine. And we can say that the formula to answer part A is going to be C cost equals 3 over 26 
D, okay? And then really, if we wanna work out the cost of fuel or petrol for a journey of 190 miles, we just replace the D with 190, and we get C equals three over 26, multiply by 190, pop that in your calculator, and you're gonna get 2192, which is uh, 21 pounds and 92 pence for the cost of that particular journey. OK, let's move on then to part B. And again, very similar to the kind of way we had to deal with the one at the top. But we're going to use exactly the same formula. So for part B, I've got cost equals 3 over 26D. OK, and in this particular case, we're, call, we're told that the cost of the journey is actually 12.75 equals 3 over 26D. All right, so a little bit awkward, but again, you would use a calculator to divide both sides by 3 over 26. And if you use um, the uh, fraction key in the calculator, you should be able to do that in one go. But, you know, it takes a little bit of practice, but you should be OK with it. If you're not sure, add a comment below and I'll put some uh, information in the comments. When we've divided through, however, we should get 110.5 equals D. So therefore, it's going to be 110.5 miles. OK, answer to that particular question. All right, let's move on then to an inverse proportion, which is the last question on this particular worksheet. Please do stop the video, have a go at the question, compare your solution. So it says um, A is inversely proportional. So let's just have a look. Uh, if I start with A is inversely proportional to 1 over B. OK, so this 1 over B basically means an inverse relationship. Got to write that again as a formula, and I can write that as A equals K over B. And then basically, that would be the answer to this particular question once we've worked out the value of K. And we are told that when A equals 4, B equals 6. So again, we plug the numbers in. We say 4 equals K over 6. 6 times 4 is 24, therefore k equals 4. So in answer to the first question, the formula itself, if I write this up here, um, the um, a equals 24, oh sorry, this is 24, 24 over b, and that's the answer to the first question. Okay, so hopefully you've seen there, all I've done is I've multiplied both sides through by 6, and I get 24 equals K, and that would give me the actual formula itself, which is the bit I'm going to use then to answer part B. So in part B, OK, I'm going to use the same formula, A equals 24 over B. All right, calculate B when A equals 12. Slightly different, 12 equals 24 over B. Well, a little bit of algebra manipulation needs to go on there, but basically it culminates in swapping these two around, and I get B equals 24 over 12, so therefore B equals 2, and that's the answer to part B. OK, final question then is C, calculate A when B equals 0 0.4. So it's slightly bit easier, actually. Again, I'm going to use exactly the same formula, A equals 24 over B. But this time I'm working out A and B is actually 24 divided by, or B rather, is 0 0.4. So therefore A must equal 60. OK. That's the end of this particular video. I hope you found it very useful. Um, if you're not sure about anything, please do let me know. There are links um, that I can, I can always post on the comments with other playlists that give you more examples. And I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.